Flowers on the Wall, written and illustrated by Miriam Nerlov. It was winter in Warsaw, Poland in 1938 in a small basement apartment deep inside the Jewish section of the city. Rachel lay beneath layers of blankets. She had a bad cough and had to stay in bed. Rachel's father was at Naluki, the main shopping district for the Jews of Warsaw. He was searching for cloth, paper, and odds and ends to supply his dry goods store. Rachel's older brother, Nat, was with him. When will Papa be home, Rachel thought, longingly of the food her father might bring, especially if he made a sale or two at the store. Soon, soon, her mother sighed. Mama gave Rachel some hot broth and wiped a smudge on the window. In their dim one-room apartment, this window was important, and she kept it very clean. She sat down at the bed of Rachel. Through the window, they guessed which neighbors the passing legs and shoes belonged to. Mr. Feldberg, said Mama. Dr. Rosenstein, Rachel countered. No, it's Mr. Kramer, Mama pointed out to the knots in his shoelaces of the shuffling wingtip shoes. Dr. Rosenstein would never wear broken shoelaces. The streets began to empty. The sky was darkening. Rachel recognized her father's walk. His frayed black trousers and brown shoes, followed by a second, smaller pair of pant legs and shoes. Papa, Rachel tapped on the window, and Nat. Thank goodness they're home. The Jews shouldn't be out so late, drawing attention to themselves, Mama exclaimed. Rachel knew that the local police would beat a Jew for no reason if they had the opportunity. When Papa and Nat came in, Rachel saw that their hands were empty. It's worse than I thought, Papa said as they sat down to a dinner of hard bread and stale and salted herring. The boycott has hurt us terribly. Henrik has used some goods for me to buy, but he has no money to get new supplies. His non-Jewish customers have all been going elsewhere. What will we do? Mama threw her hands up impatiently. Jews are being forced out of their jobs. How can Jews support other Jews when none of us have any money? Rachel went to bed still hungry that night. Rachel lay against the wall to make room for the narrow on the narrow bed for Nat. There were only two beds in the apartment, one for Mom and Papa and one for Rachel and Nat. They were lucky some families only had one bed for the whole family to sleep in. Mama and Papa were talking softly in their bed. Rachel tried to listen, but her throat tickled and she coughed. Nat kicked her to be quiet. Do you hear what they're saying? Rachel moved closer to Nat. His body was warmer than the wall. No, I can't hear them, and watch where you cough. You keep spitting on me. Nat grumbled, pushing his feet against Rachel's leg. They were icy cold, and Rachel cried out in protest. Children! Across the room, as they could see Mama's dark figure sitting up, Mama and Papa had forgotten to hang the privacy curtain around their bed. Things are going to get much worse, Nat whispered after a few moments. That's why Mama and Papa are worried. What do you mean? I think Papa's going to have to close his store. We saw lots of closed stores on our way home today. It's been going on this way for Jews for months. Nat took a deep breath. Now go to sleep, he said. We'll be all right. I'll bet Papa has a plan. A plan? What plan? Rachel closed her eyes and thought about the last day of summer when Papa brought home a bag filled with oranges and chocolate. Maybe Papa had a good plan that would bring in more food. Nat couldn't answer Rachel, though. He put his arm around her and they fell asleep. A few days later, Papa came home from work early with the bad news that Nat had predicted. My store is gone, he said, slumping in his chair, shut down like Shlomo Pearl Stationery Store and Natchum Polsky's Scrap Shop. The landlord is already renting it out to a new, non-Jewish merchant. Mama gave Papa some tea. He took a few sips and patted his coat pocket, trying to smile. I have a plan, Papa said, pulling out some papers. Here are licenses. 
Nat and I are new members of a group of Jewish porters. Nat, you are a Traegers, a porter, and so am I. Maybe now we will earn some money. Papa, Rachel thought of how stooped and how tired many of the porters looked hauling loads through the street corners. These loads were meant for horses to pull, but were more cheaply drawn by Jews. The Polish government knew that the horse needed to be fed and cared for. A Jew did not. Jacob, Mama couldn't hide her disappointment. But what of Cheddar? Nat loved his school and couldn't imagine not going. I'm sorry, Papa shook his head. We all must work now, at least for the time being. But nothing eased Rachel's loneliness. With her family gone every day, the apartment seemed smaller and grayer. Don't leave, Rachel would plead with her mother in the mornings. Though her cough had gotten better, Rachel's shoes no longer fit, and there was no money to buy her new ones. She would have to stay inside all winter. After Rachel finished scrubbing the stove in the corner or cleaning the window, she looked at the pictures and the treasured books on Mama and Papa's bookshelf. With little else to do, Rachel spent the afternoons in bed, where it was warmer. She gazed out the window, waiting for the legs of her family to pass by. Queen Rachel, Nat teased, trying to cheer her up when he returned at night, sitting on their bed with blankets covering her like woolly capes. Rachel looked like a queen on her throne. Then one evening, Papa brought some paints home and two small paintbrushes. They were on the top of a sack in one of my loads, Papa said, handing them to Rachel. The owner of the load said I could have them. He was an old man who told me that his eyes were going bad anyway. Rachel fingered the soft brushes. They're nice, Papa, she said, but we don't have paper. Paper, Papa grinned. He waved his arm around the room. Who needs paper? Papa wanted to paint the, on the apartment's four walls instead of on paper. This ought to liven things up. Right away, Rachel and Papa began painting flowers on the wall. Now Rachel had something to do during the long, cold days. After everybody left for work, she put on thick socks and painted pink, purple, blue, yellow flowers. They soon covered the cracked walls. They arched over the two beds, the bookshelf and the corner kitchen, linked together by leaves and stems. See how I painted the petals on this one, Rachel proudly showed one Papa one evening. You're a wonderful artist, Papa hugged Rachel, his beard tickling her neck. Nat pointed to a deep blue flower with a round black center. That's my favorite, she said. They're lovely, Mama smiled. I haven't seen such flowers since we visited Aunt Sophie in the country, and that was more than a year ago. By the time spring arrived, Rachel had used up the last of her paints. By now, with the warmer weather, she could play outside in the courtyard barefoot with her friend Naomi. The girl squatted on the ground near Rachel's building. This is our feast for the ants, Naomi said, arranging some pebbles in a circle. Here's a roast for the queen ant, Rachel picked up a large white pebble. I wish we had a real roast, Naomi said. I hate herring. Me too. Hey, Rachel jumped up. Zeb and Mark ran away into the alley. Rachel and Naomi wanted to chase them, but the cobblestones hurt their feet. A few weeks later, Papa brought home some a pair of old leather shoes for Rachel. They were creased, and one had a hole in the toe, but they fit her. That same day, Mama handed Rachel a small bouquet of flowers. Mrs. Stacy Hack, the Catholic doctor's wife, she gave me these flowers, and I finished sewing her blouse today, Mama said. I wanted you to have them. They're beautiful, Rachel held the flowers to her cheek, wishing she could paint them. They, then she ran outside to show Naomi her gifts. At last, there was enough money saved for Nat to return to Cheddar. Rachel went to school for the first time to a girl's cheddar located in Melamed's or the teacher's apartment down the street. Hurry up, Rachel yelled to Nat, even when they weren't late. He walked her to school every day, and she didn't want to miss a minute of it. Rachel was beginning to read Hebrew and Yiddish, and her class was already studying the sacred Jewish texts.
Then, on September 29, 1939, Nazis occupied Warsaw. Germans are such civilized people, Mama reassured her family. They will treat us with respect, even though they are occupying Germany, or occupying our country, sorry. But Mama was wrong. Life grew harder as more Jewish jobs and businesses were taken away. Warsaw Jews over the age of 10 were forced to wear a white armband with a blue star of David on it. One evening, Papa rushed through the door, slamming it behind him. Naomi's father, I heard the Germans beat him and took him away yesterday in broad daylight. I saw them taking more Jews away today in trucks. We must stay inside and there will be no more cheddar until the war is over or until it's safer, Papa said. Once again, Rachel found herself sitting in her apartment wrapped in blankets. She had helped Mama cover the window with a sheet and the room was very dark. This was to keep the German soldiers outside from noticing them. Sometimes when Papa and Nat were out getting food, Mama carefully lifted the sheet to look for them. Sunlight hit the walls briefly and Rachel could see that her painted flowers were beginning to fade. When this is all over, Papa and I will get you some more paints, Mama promised, holding Rachel on her lap. She kissed Rachel's tears. Maybe someday we'll move to Paris, Rachel said. My teacher says that wonderful artists live there, Mama. But Rachel and her family never went to Paris. Instead, they were moved into the Warsaw Ghetto, a part of a city that had been walled off for the Jews. In July of 1942, they were deported to Treblinka, a concentration camp. Rachel's dreams, along with those of thousands of others, uh, Warsaw Jews, faded like the flowers on her apartment walls, and then they were gone forever.